So if we look at all the videos we've seen so far, the breadth first search, the depth first search, the iterative deepening search, the bi-directional search, each one of those were falling under the banner of what we called an uninformed search. And the entire idea is with an uninformed search, you know, I'm just kind of shooting out into the dark and hoping that one of my pathways may lead to my G. All right, and I don't really know how far uh, each one is getting me closer. I don't know if uh, this step is getting me any closer to G than this step. And that, that idea of getting closer, that's actually where we introduce the idea of an informed search. And specifically, we have to start introducing more uh, uh, formulas, if you will. <clears throat> so what we're looking at when we deal with sort of informed searches is what we call sort of our evaluation function, this idea of an F of N. Given some N, some node, some node that I am currently at, what is the desirability of going desirability? What is the desirability of going to this node? So if we thought about it again with that idea of, you know, my, my kind of four, or I think I'm doing a five by five. If I had a starting point and I had a goal, you know, I had some node moving to the right. Then I'm just going to draw it like this. I'm effectively saying, what is the desirability, desire, desirability of moving right? And it's through this F that we can actually utilize and make some more informed decisions because we can start to utilize some of those different data structures that we've seen in our previous courses, specifically something known as a priority queue. Something, you know, if we associate different values to these different possible steps, so this step versus this step, each one's again going to have some desirability associated with it. And I could make a decision where, say, for example, moving down is better than moving to the right. So how do we do that? That's where we get into this idea of path scoring. And specifically, we have to break our desirability, our F function, into two other sort of terms, G and H. When we look at G, the idea here is how far have I gone already? So if we're thinking about sort of that S and looking at the different branch ways, if I only did a three stepper uh, for the sake of drawing, you know, boom, boom, and boom. When I get to sort of this point, my G would have equaled two. That's a G, not an S. The entire idea is, oh, I had to make one step, two steps. I had to go two steps in this direction to get here. But that actually leads to, again, the idea of H. So G may be good. Again, this idea that maybe I want to minimize my steps, and so I want a low G. Uh, but H is then saying, well, again, I'm searching for some goal, and there's some pathway to that goal. So given this point, there's this mythical sort of connection between us. Can we estimate how much further I have to go to get to G? And you can sort of see this in action. You know, again, I have an S that has two potential pathways, one moving to the uh, or upward and then one moving to the right. Well, both of them, again, are going to have this G equaling one. I've made one step in sort of my search. But then we're also asking sort of the question of, well, what's their H? And that's where, you know, we'll see this in a, a little bit of our talks over the next few videos. This H is what we call a heuristic. It's an estimation. And so because it's an estimation, there are a number of possible kind of algorithms you can use to make that estimate. 
and one that I'll at least sort of introduce as sort of a very uh, uh, simple, basic version is known as the Manhattan Distance Method. And the entire idea is it's inspired by the uh, different blocks uh, and streets and intersections of Manhattan in New York. And the entire idea is, well, I go up and to the right, or I'm going sort of in linear motions only. So I can only go sort of up, down, left, and right. When we think about this sort of wall, so this is a wall right here, this estimate does not care about it. It's just saying, you know what, it, it's just another step along the way because we'll, you know, obviously when we are making decisions, we know that we can't go through the wall. So as a result, we just sort of, again, treat it as a, it's another step along the way. One way to think about this is go all the way back in time to when you were learning about slopes. Specifically, you learned that there was an M slope, and then you know your instructor probably used some idea of a rise, then run to describe it. The entire idea, again, if you thought about it, you know, M, we use sort of this fraction of going, oh, you know, I rise one, I run six. In our case, rather, we're going to say that that one, that one is our G, and then that six is, is our H. And so rather than turning it into a fraction, right, our F for any given node, again, if we're looking at, say, A5, so my, my F of A5 would have been, oh, well, a G of 1, because it's only taking me one step, plus, using Manhattan distance, it would take me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 potential, again, we're making only an estimation, 6 potential moves to get to my goal. Conversely, if I wanted to look at f of uh, b6, b6, again, it's only one step, so g is going to be the same, and we would do the same sort of calculation. So it would take me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as well. All right, well, just to kind of make it a slightly different, let's arbitrarily say I'll use this one uh, as a better sort of source. Let's say G was not here, but rather it was sitting right here. Okay, well, again, how many steps would it take? My F of A5, again, is still going to take one step, so my G is still one, plus how many moves would it take from A5 to get to our goal, A1? One, two, three, four. And then if we looked at my F from B6, again, it's only one step. Well, how many moves does it take? One, two, three, four, five, out oh, six. And so if you then calculated those out, A5 versus B6, oh, well, you know, this one happens to be the cheaper of those two. And since we can use something like a priority queue to make A5 come to the top of our queue, Oh, that's the route I should explore next. Another type of heuristic that you could use is something known as the straight line distance formula, or literally the distance between two points. Uh, this works a little bit better if we're dealing with situations, in our case, when we don't have a grid structure. So I'm just sort of using a, a, a much more cleaned up map uh, from my previous videos, because again, uh, I want to make this you know, slightly easy to kind of manipulate. But if we're looking at it, each one of my uh, different airports has a sort of estimation of how far it will go. My estimation was I popped in these airports or these city names into Google Maps, and then I recorded how many miles it would take to drive from, say, Atlanta to Seattle. Okay, well, if you notice, uh, these are just producing some kind of value to them. And we can still do that same idea of the G plus H. If, again, we're looking at it from RDU's perspective, so the F of, say, for example, going from RDU to 
uh, Charlotte, well, that would take, again, 167 steps to get to Charlotte. And then, well, we would just look up that little calculation uh, or that, that heuristic, and that's 2795. And I'm not going to do that math off the top of my head. <laughs> so as a, a consequence, again, we see that we have a score and we can compare that score to other scores. And that introduces us to the idea of a star path finding. We utilize again that G and that H to make those evaluations. So how do we kind of work through this? Let's say again, I'm working off of the notion that I wanna work off of uh, Raleigh to Seattle. Okay, well again, I'm working, instead of it being a queue or a stack, I'm working off of a priority queue. And the entire idea, just to kind of refresh that very shortly, is as I add elements into the priority queue, so let's say that's a six, that becomes a seven, that's an eight, that's a nine, as I add in, say for example, a two, since I see that two is less than my parent, what we can do is something called bubbling up. I can swap this two and this seven, so this would become the seven, this would become a two. And when I do a comparison like that again, again, we're slowly moving our highest priorities, or in our case, the lowest priorities, to the top of our queue. I can remove or I can swap out that five and that two. So five goes there, two goes there. Uh, what this is again allowing us to do is again see, oh, well, since I know I can access the root of my priority queue, that's going to turn into, in our case, where we go next. So in our case, we start off. I like to draw this kind of format out. So this idea that you see I have where I'm coming from, Again, this is helpful when we're sort of making our decision of how we make our moves to some given location. Since we're starting at RDU, you know, this is a not. This is, it's null, it's, it's none, it's whatever we want as sort of our algorithm. Same kind of things going on with our G. Since we are starting here, we don't need to move here. It's not going to cost us anything to move here because we're already here. But we still ask that same question, how much further do we have to go? Because we're already in the A star algorithm. So we see that it would take us 2,844 sort of miles if we were to just drive from here uh, straight through, don't care about anything else. And so that gives us the F score 2,844. Okay, so we just established our starting point. What happens next? Well, each one of the moves or the uh, airports that we can work off of from RDU, so in our case, uh, Dallas, or not Dallas, uh, uh, Washington, D.C., Charlotte, or Atlanta, those are the only three that I made for uh, this little example, those get expanded upon. And again, we're looking at, specifically, I like to sort of add in what the G's are for each one of these pathways. This just helps my brain sort of keep everything together. And you notice I'm just sort of following alphabetical order as I add them in. And this is mostly just for my sake of, um, you, I gotta do a lot of math, so I, I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not gonna try and figure it out then add them to my visualization. I'm just gonna add them in a certain way. But one of the things again you're noticing is, well, to get from RDU to Atlanta, it would take 407 miles, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and say that that's our G. And then we ask the heuristic, well, from Atlanta, how far would it be from Seattle? And that's uh, 2,600. Well, we guess what? We add those two together. That's gonna to give it an F score of just over 3,000, 3,000 miles in this case. Okay, fair, that's one out of my three possible routes. So I'm gonna check next. What do I do with Charlotte? Well, Charlotte, it's much closer to RDU, and it only takes me uh, 167 miles to get there. Okay, fair. Uh, and, you know, it's a little further away from, uh, from Seattle than Atlanta, you know, Georgia versus uh, Raw, uh, North Carolina. Uh, so it's a little further, about 100 miles more. So we add them together, and you're going to notice, oh, 
2,900. Okay, we're not done. We we still have to do Washington, D.C., and we do, and we see that it's uh, very, very much just under 3,000. So what happens? Well, again, think about it like it's a priority queue. I added in sort of this 3,044. That should be a 4. I then added in the 2,960. 2,962. And because of how the priority queue works, it did a comparison to its parent. And it sees, oh, well, guess what? You're... You're cheaper, so you have higher priority. So in the sort of structure itself, this became 2,962, and this became 3,044. 44. Then as we added in uh, Washington, D.C., it was 3,007. We did that same comparison. We didn't see that it was a cheaper route or a higher priority and so it just stays where it was so we adjust okay well we see oh you know charlotte is the uh cheapest next step so let's look there first specifically i used a word there look there first we're still in the planning mode we are we have not left rdu we're just considering and thinking about all our possible routes. Okay, well, we go to Charlotte, and then what happens? Well, you jump all the way back to the uh, Charlotte slide or the airport slide that had all the pathways from Charlotte. I'm just gonna click through. Uh, I do drop out the numbers because then it gets a little uglier. But you can see that what I did is I sort of added in all the different pathways, uh, they're already in order just for the sake of uh, ease. But one thing I did sort of leave out is how we calculate out these second step Gs. One of the things we have to do is we are still considering how much we've already gone. Remember, that's the point of G. How, many, how, how much have I already done? So when I look at, say, for example, Charlotte to St. Louis, St. Louis would have been 715 miles, what I'm dealing with is a G of 167 plus 715. H hasn't changed. We're still utilizing that same uh, straight line heuristic. So we again go all the way down and we still see that it is, uh, you know, in this case, 2083. We add those, we add the G and the H together and we pull out the 2965 and that's it you can see we do that with each one of these kind of pathways and that's sort of an interesting point notice uh in our case even though sort of in my examples before uh, chicago o'hare was sort of the the quick route st louis is actually uh pulling ahead right now and so we do have to again consider this before we can consider this and so again that's exactly what we're doing you can see i'm just sort of walking through these steps you can uh, take a, a moment if you want to work through this on your own go ahead and sort of pause through this but again we see so uh, st louis is the next cheapest route so it's the next thing that gets pulled out of the priority queue and we expand on it and we get uh, kansas city or once again o'hare so again same kind of concepts going on we add those to the queue. You can see that we're still sort of making the calc I've made these calculations. And so this brings up an interesting point because once again, the queue is going to move these to their respective locations because obviously this 3,700 is a uh, lower priority than a uh, 29 and a 32. So, oh, well, what happens? In our case, notice I have a tie, technically. I could compare uh, Charlotte to O'Hare, or I could co uh, compare St. Louis to Kansas City. They both are going to give me the same F. And so what do I do in this situation? Do I leave it as is? And so uh, in our case, if you were here first, you have higher priority. Or if you are a new sort of uh, addition to the queue, you're added 
ahead. That's effectively going to be the difference between, uh, I'll call it node A being, let me, <laughs> that's sort of the difference between node A being less than node B versus node A being less than or equal to node B. It's really, in essence, which one of these comparison operators does your comparison function do? And so in our sake, uh, I'm going to work off of the uh, O'Hare one. It was first in the queue. You know, that just makes sense to me. So again, O'Hare is the next one out of our little position. And so what do we do? We expand on all of O'Hare's possible routes. So I am dropping out some of these because, again, I'm trying to make this at least a little readable. But if you feel like it, you can calculate them all out. And so, again, we start to see. But notice, even though O'Hare was added in, and because O'Hare has a connecting flight to Seattle, oh, I can taste it. I can, I can taste that this is right within distance. Just like we've seen in our other searches, just because it's in the queue for consideration doesn't mean it's a valid solution. We haven't made that decision yet. We haven't made that step. We still have to make our expansion to, from St. Louis to Kansas City first. So we have to. And we walk through it. And we see that, yes, even though uh, it, you know, leads to nothingness it was the next thing that needed to be considered uh we see that kansas city to atlanta and then to salt lake city uh both of these are not that great uh let's see salt lake city kind of gets me closer so you can see that one of them does make it to the the visualization and it's all right it, you know it's what fifth in the queue we may consider it again it's it's higher up there than some you know than going back to atlanta uh but again we just continue to walk through the algorithm but as you clearly see once we get to the next item in the priority queue we go from o'hare to seattle seattle is our goal condition And we've done a star search. Congratulations. Now what? Oh, well, you know, again, I'm still here. I'm still at RDU. So I still have to technically make my first move. I still have not done that. So how do I do that? And that's sort of where I was making these twos and froms. Why was I doing that? Because what was the parent from Seattle? Because I found my goal. How did I get there? Oh, well, to get to Seattle, I had to come from O'Hare. To get to O'Hare, I had to come from Charlotte. To get to Charlotte, I had to come from RDU. Hey, wait a minute. That's my start. Oh, well, happy days. Since I know that RDU was my starting point, this is the action I should take. I should move, in this case, to Charlotte. And once all this is said and done, you do it all over again. I have to do the same comparison now from Charlotte to Seattle. Well, why? Well, for, you know, airports, they don't move that often. It's not going to be terrible uh, to kind of calculate it once and be done with it and just save your path. But sort of the way to think about it is what happens if I'm dealing with sort of, let me draw out at least a little bit of pathways. What if I'm dealing with sort of a, a different type of game? Maybe I'm dealing with a cat. This is my drawing of a cat. Be happy. I'm at least trying. I want a cat that is chasing a mouse. So here is sort of my mouse. All right, well, again, oh, you know, the A star calculations are kicking in and firing off. You know, the G's here would be a one, and then I have to do the one, two, three. Uh, so G again, one, H, if I did Manhattan, I just, that's the one I picked off the top of my head. Uh, one, two, three, it would take me a three step. Uh, 
there's another route that I'd have to do. More to my point is, let's say arbitrarily, I did make this move. This is where I ended up after that first action. Well, it's a mouse, right? And if we think about a mouse seeing a cat come towards it, it probably is going to try and run away. And what I mean by that is my goal, sort of again, this goal may be changing, right? The rat or mouse may move down a pathway. And, oh, well, you know, suddenly uh, I have to recalculate where I am because I'm no longer here. My goal is no longer here. I'm going to have to take from where I'm at and do a new calculation to potentially a new goal. So when we think about the properties, again, pulling out those terminologies, what we're dealing with is, is it complete? Yes, we are going to be able to find a solution if a solution exists. And then we look at this idea of optimality. Okay, well, when we think about optimal, is it going to give me the optimal solution? What we instead change for instead of optimal, because we're going to learn that that's a, a really hard uh, solution or a term to kind of chase after. What we're going to see is that it is admissible. It will get me a solution that is better than most solutions or uh, than a lot of the other solutions. So uh, from a tree search perspective, again, better than some other searches. May not be the optimal one, but it, uh, again, may be better, may not be. Again, that's, we'll get to that. And then this idea of consistent as a graph search. If I'm looking at it from a graph's perspective versus a tree structure, what we're dealing with here is we'll get solutions that are on par. And they're going to give us something that's going to be on par with some of the other solutions. But again, it's going to get us that solution. And more specifically, that's where we introduce the idea of the space-time complexity part, right? This is the uh, slightly more important one, depending on what we're dealing with. And so again, well, how much time is it going to take? Well, it sort of depends. It may take us there we, i'll get to that in a second it will take us roughly the number of nodes with f of n smaller than the cost of the optimal path again if we looked at sort of these uh f's right there was eventually some calculation uh in our case of raleigh to seattle where's the seattle there that f right there was 29.88. That was the total cost. That's the F score of taking this pathway. So what we're dealing with is then if we're looking at it from a time complexity, again, roughly the number of nodes smaller than the overall cost. It took us m more than four steps, but it's again, how many nodes had a cheaper than not a 29.88 route. And again, I'm not going to walk through it, but again, there were a few that had a cheaper than 988 route, 2988 route. And then same with uh, how much memory is it needing? Well, again, same idea. Uh, let me make sure that I got my drawing tool on. Uh, it's going to, again, take just as many more nodes that happen to be cheaper than my optimal pathway. So as I, I sort of uh, you know, uh, danced in, and I'll, I'll at least sort of accept and that I, I can show it. How do I build it, right? I've shown you the algorithm. You can work through it. Great. I need to build this for a class, right? This is sort of my recommendation, and this link will be in the, the, the description down below. I really like sort of this uh, description of how a star sort of operates uh, from redblobgames.com. What we sort of see here is very, very much like Python. It, it's Python, but not at the same time. It's not all Python. But that first idea you can see is that we're dealing with building out a new term, this idea of a frontier. 
again, what to consider. These are things that are, when we again think about the priority queue, again, Kansas City to Salt Lake City, it was on the table to be considered, right? It's in the queue. We happen to have found our path, but what happened, or the, our goal, but what happens if that path didn't exist? Well, I have other things that I could be considering in my frontier. So again, what are we doing at that starting point? Well, again, just to get there, uh, one of the things that is lovely, at least about uh, NC State, is in 316 data structures, you had to build your priority queue. Congratulations, you built it in data structures. You understand the heap and bubbling up and uh, bubbling down. None of that. I, you are more than welcome, at least for our iteration, uh, when we do our pathfinding uh, uh, assignment, you're more than welcome to use java.util.priorityqueue. The big idea, though, that I will sort of address is sort of this E. That E in our case is some element. Again, this is a generic, so I'm doing a little bit of refresher to people who are probably learning this for the first time. Again, I have some generic variable in Java uh, that I'm assigning to priority queue. What is that going to be? Well, it depends on what you're working with. It could be a node. It could be, in our case, a position or a tile. It all depends. One of the things to kind of point out here uh, is, you know, depending on what you're uh, using as a language, uh, in our case, we're working off of Java, guess what? This dot put isn't the command to add something to the priority queue. I'm gonna leave that to you getting a little more experience about reading documentation, which is an important task. But again, what is the command to add to a priority queue. Then specifically that idea, again, I was talking about this idea of what start is. At least a little bit of a note for those of you in our AI course, our 411, my big recommendation, you should probably create some kind of node that extends or implements, I can't remember off the top of my head. comparable. The idea here is, again, when we think about different types of nodes, right, what's going to make sort of when I add, uh, you know, going to Salt, uh, Charlotte from RDU, I'm going to need to compare that to uh, going from Atlanta or going to Atlanta from RDU. Well, what is this? I need to build this. I'm just This is mostly just hints. Either way, the next little bit is that you're wanting to build some dictionaries. Or, from the Java perspective, they're called maps. The big idea here is that these are going to be working off of some reference points. Specifically, this came from. If you remember, when I was drawing out my different sort of tiles, I was sort of always using this idea of, oh, well, you know, Seattle came from O'Hare. O'Hare came from Charlotte. Charlotte came from RDU. Once again, I need some way to make that reference. I could programmatically build it and make nodes have a, uh, a parent uh, variable and I store it there. Or, or just throwing this out there, I could have a dictionary where this came from on say Charlotte could equal RDU. And once again, what do I mean by RDU? It's the node that represents that or the tile position, again, depending on your assignment. Well, again, that's telling me, oh, I happen to know where something came from. And I also am going to happen to know the cost to get to Charlotte 
again, because I happen to know, oh, it was a, uh, just off the top of my head, because I just saw it, I remember it was 167 miles, so the cost to get to Charlotte would be that. Okay, well, I'm walking through the algorithm or the pseudocode then. Uh, shameless promotion, if you are unfamiliar with uh, maps, uh, there's a handsome lo little devil that uh, made a video uh, you can check out right now uh, on how to use a map. But moving on, so again, we're in the priority queue. And so again, while the queue Frontier dot, uh, I'm just drawing out some little bit of Java. So while the Frontier is not empty or Python, the first thing we're doing is we're grabbing again that root node. What was the priority? What has the highest priority right now? Once again, may not be Git, so you gotta check your documentation. Either way, with the current, I ask a simple question first, is that current the goal? So when we were at Seattle, yes, great. But what happens when we moved to Charlotte? Okay, well, that was not the goal. So we continue checking out. What are the neighbors of Charlotte? And this again is now checking all the possible pathways from this. And what do we do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to effectively cost or figure out our G. New cost is referring to, again, how much did it take to get here, plus just what's this next step? It'll, again, when it was uh, Charlotte, that was, again, only just 167. But remember, we also did Charlotte uh, to O'Hare, O-R-D, and that turned out to be 167 plus, I believe, 715. That's what we're dealing with here. Again, this is the 167. So that's the 167. That's the 715. Either way, we've just calculated out G. Now what do we do? I guess I skipped. Let me pull up this one then. Now that I have that, well, okay, I see that that is not in there, so I haven't considered this path. This is a little bit of Dijkstra's algorithm in the A star uh, going on here, and this happens to be the cheapest. Uh, this new cost is going to be cheaper uh, than before. So again, we're sort of storing that for later usage. And then notice specifically, what's the H? And they're sort of throwing that as, it's, again, whatever function you want it to be. Is it going to be the Manhattan distance? Is it going to be straight line? Are you going to uh, do, you know, the distance between two points? And so literally a distance formula uh, or some other heuristic that I'm not even thinking of at this time. But again, you can see. So this idea of priority, that's, a f that's akin to F. And so when we then think about new cost, just like we said before, new cost is akin to G. And then as you can sort of see from that last little bit there, heuristic, and I'll just do that, heuristic is our H. We have calculated out our F. And the, what, so what do we do? Well, then we take that next potential step and we add it to the priority queue with its F. And then you can see, oh, we're happen we happen to acknowledge, oh, from this location, I came from wherever I was. So again, when we think about uh, ORD, so O'Hare uh, came from ORD. And again, our current, if we're thinking about this, again, just working off of our example, was CLT. We're just storing that again for later use because at the end of the day, once we've found all this and we break out of the queue, what do we have to do? We have to figure out how do I get back or how do I make my first step? Notice none of this is telling me what the first step is. That's where I'm going to have to traverse these different steps. So again, where did I get how did I get to Seattle? Well, I went to ORD. 
So, oh, well, how did I get to ORD? I went to Charlotte. How did I get to Charlotte? Oh, I went from RDU. Hey, wait a minute. RDU was my starting point. I know suddenly which move I have to do next. Ah, oh, A star. 